Hurry, come quickly. The clothes are wrinkling. Redo. Yep. That previous video was so good. Still one of my favorite automations. It's time to update it. Do it for 2021. Get it done. Make it easy. Yep, that's what we're doing. Oh, and is it Tasmoda? Tasmodo? Tasmota? Potato? Patata? Tomato? I don't know. But I do know one thing. Get your shit out of the cloud. There are multiple solutions to do this. You can do this with a power monitoring plug. And yes, this is a US version. There are many other versions for whatever country that you may be in to also do the same thing. So you may just have to find one that works with your power standard of plug. Insert joke down in comments below about how this plug has seen some stuff in its life. So this one is the Sonoff or by IT, however you want to say it, the S31. It's still one of my favorite power monitoring plugs because you can take two of them and you can plug them into one receptacle and it doesn't block the other one. So if you still want to plug something in the second plug, you don't have any issue doing that. And then of course, you know, since this is the DIY channel, this one you can flash it with Tasmoda and it does open up as we've shown in a previous video and we're going to show in this one that you can flash this manually you don't need any type of exploit to your converge so no ata or diy blah 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 whatever you can just do it and get it done with no soldering as well now be careful there are a few different versions this is the sonoff s31 light and you'll notice they do look exactly the same, but guess what? No power monitoring. Don't buy the light version. There's also a Zigbee version of this that looks exactly the same. It's also the light version with no power monitoring. Now that would be pretty cool if Sonoff IT came out with a Zigbee version with power monitoring, hint, hint. Now, if all of this is a little too much for you and say you just don't want to deal with having to open any plug up or put clips or whatever it might be, there are a lot of solutions out there in pre-flashed plugs or over-the-air flash plugs. And again, we've done the video on this on how to upgrade the Shelly devices. This is a Shelly plug here for another country. Don't ask why I have it. And there's the Shelly Plug US. There are several other plugs out there, such as this is the Atom, and it comes pre flashed with Tasmoda all on the plug. Take it out the box, add it to your network, configure it in Home Assistant, Open Hab, Node Red, whatever, and you're done. Dig around on, say, eBay. We'll look around on eBay and see what other flashed devices are out there because there are some people out there that are flashing devices but you will pay a few dollars more because it does you have to pay for someone's time to take the device and flash it for you it just depends on what your time is worth and what you want to do now next thing that you need and if you've seen the jig videos well you've seen this same thing as well these are the little test clips now you just push the button on the back and the little clip comes out you just take it and you can go straight to these if you like or you could use a female to male dupont jumper much like this one here plug this up to the adapter and then you could just clip to these if you like now if you're looking for any of the products or solutions or the exact different clips we may have used or flashers, etc. We're going to leave all the links down below and in full disclosure, they are affiliate links, but there's no additional cost to you and it does help out the channel. If you don't want to use those links, by all means, not a problem. Just give us a like, dislike, whatever it may be, subscribe, and well, we'll be happy with that, right? So to open this little bad boy up, guess what? There's no glue. How many smart plugs can you say that about? Probably not that many. One easy way to do it is what you need to do is take this little gray cap off. I don't recommend using a blade. I try to stay out of the hospitals. And if you just take your spudger 
and if you can put it in that edge there and you can just pop this off and just work yourself around and pop this little gray cap off that's just a little power button these little slides will just slide out pretty cool design and amazing phillips screwdriver take the phillips and take your three screws out grab this here and simply pull this out that's it rx tx now these next two pads that have the rx and tx that's not your rx and tx to the actual esp chip you come from the back side of the board and you'll simply hook it over now you do want to make sure it's not on the other pad you'll simply repeat the four pins and that's it and you say well wait what about gpio zero well the cool part about this plug this is gpio zero now do remember that the tx goes to the rx on the flasher and then the rx goes to the tx on the flasher you have to flip them because you're transmitting from here so this one should receive it and then when this one transmits this one should receive it you can't do tx to tx and rx to rx because then they'll just be bashing their heads and remember you do need to hold the button and then plug it in then you can let go of the button and we're using Tasmatizer here. You can use Node MCU, Pi Flasher, ESP Tool. If you use those, do make sure you do use D out as the flashing type. And we're gonna do release. You do the full release. Do not use Tasmoto Lite because there's a particular feature that's missing we like to use in the power monitoring. And you do want to use erase before flashing. So we'll go ahead and hit Tasmatize. And there we go, You're Tasmatizing your device. Maybe you had an issue and you couldn't get things right or whatever, jump on down in the Discord. It's a friendly little chat with a lot of different people hanging out in the community and the link's down below in the video description and come hang out with us, you'll learn some stuff. Even I learn stuff every day in there. Process successful, power cycle the device. You'll want to pull up a Wi-Fi scan on say your phone or a laptop or whatever, or tablet, doesn't matter to me, as long as it can scan for an access point. What you're gonna look for is a Tasmoda underscore and a bunch of letters and numbers, and that's gonna be your new device. Go ahead and attach to it, and it should give you the auto login, but if it doesn't, go to 192.168.4.1, and it will pull up the access point page on that device. And once you get into Tasmoda, you'll notice it's gonna be set for Sonoff Basic. That's incorrect. And no, you don't need any templates or special setup for this because it's just built into Tasmoda, just like the two MCU demers. So go to configuration, configure module. So we're gonna to go to the Sonoff S31. Don't set any other things on here, just pick S31 and hit save. Now once it reboots, you should have the S31 module. And you may be tempted to, hey, I want to turn it on, right? But again, we're not hooked to mains power. So if you hit toggle, it's not going to turn on the relay because the relay requires 5 volts and we're not powering with 5 volts. So it, the relay won't turn on. But guess what? We're going to take this off of the USB, put it back together, and hook it up to mains. So we're back, pulled up the web page, got our lamp plugged in. Again, you can use something else, just know the power specs for that. And you can see we're pretty close on just a regular light bulb. So maybe you don't wanna calibrate it, but we're here to learn something. Your plug may not be exactly like ours. And no, just to show you, I'm not going to pull all these commands out my butt and type them in the console. I'm going to go through the documentation for the power monitoring calibration. Here's the three key commands, the power set, voltage set, and current set. So it's pretty straightforward, the voltage set. If you go into the console, and I know from looking at another plug in my home that is calibrated that the voltage is at 120.5 right now. Then we are using a 60 watt bulb. 
So we're gonna do power set 60 for 60 watts and give or take the amperage for that bulb is gonna be about 0.48. There are several different calculators on the web. You may be tempted to do 0 0.48. That's not correct. You'll do current set space 480 and that's gonna be 0 0.48 amps. Jump back to the main menu and you can check your workout. If you haven't set up MQTT before, if you have, the little things are down at the bottom, skip on. If not, do make sure that in it, you're using the supervised version or if you're just using Docker Core. If you're using Docker Core, you will need to install your own MQTT. It's pretty simple. And if you're doing Docker Core, you probably know how to do that. If you're on a supervisor, you would install MQTT, install it and get it started. And we'll go to configuration, go to configure MQTT, put in your host IP, that's gonna be your home assistant or wherever your MQTT broker's at. Don't change the port, don't change the client. So we're gonna use the just plug underscore S31 washer. Hit save. Tasmodo's gonna reboot. We're gonna, now we're gonna go into configuration. We need to give it a friendly name. Gonna configure other. We're just gonna call it washer plug. And for the friendly name, we're gonna call it washer plug as well. It's just one relay. And we'll go ahead and hit save. And that's pretty much it for the setup. Yeah, believe it or not, go to Home Assistant and your configuration, you go to integrations. And if you don't already have it, you'll hit add integration and you'll search in for Tasmoto and just add it in. One device already there. We didn't do anything, popped up, boom, it's done. Pretty slick, isn't it? Go to one device. You can see we have washer plug. It's using the Tasmodo integration. Go ahead and click it. Now, one thing I did want to point out, and I did this on purpose. You'll notice you turned it on. I still have that 60 watt light bulb. Where's my power monitoring? Well, there's a cool command. Remember I talked about using the full Tasmodo band file? And yeah, I did lie a little bit. We have one thing left to do on Tasmodo. Go back to the plug. You'll notice it's reporting here. Go to the console. Now power delta is going to report on a percentage change. It's gonna force a new MQTT message to update Home Assistant or your automations or whatever when it changes a certain percent. So we'll go ahead and be put it at 10. If you ever feel it's too aggressive and yeah, MQTT can handle a lot of messages, you can back it off. Totally up to you. We're gonna put in Power Delta 10. So let's jump back to Home Assistant and we'll turn it on. And you'll notice almost immediately, it's going to jump up on the power. You can see we have our 58 watts. Now, before you do the automation, there's one thing we wanna do. There's multiple ways to do this. We did MQTT for this before, but yeah, we're trying to stick to the GUI and this is a little easier to do this. Go to Helpers. And you're gonna say add helper and you're gonna say text. And we'll do washer state and we'll do washing dash machine. And we don't need a hundred, we'll just do like 25. We'll leave it as text and then we'll go ahead and hit create. And now you have your input text washer state. So now that you got your plug in, here's the magic part. We used to have to do this with the file editor. Hats off to the devs for doing this. Go hit the automation, hit the plus. Here's the washer plug. And what do you want to do? Well, I want to do the washer plug energy. I know it sounds weird. Washer energy power, power changes. And this is going to be washer idle. And next thing we need to do, is we're gonna look at the trigger. Now it's already filled this out for us. Washer plug, power changes. Now remember we're doing idle. Now, I don't know about you, but on my washing machine, a lot of times it'll fill up, it'll run, and then it may start some soak cycle and it may just sit there and it's not using any power. You don't want the plug to report back and the automation to go, oh, hey, there's no power and then tell you the washer's done when it's halfway through or less and then you're gonna piss off the misses and whatever, just, yeah, don't do that. This may take some tweaking and going and checking your various cycles. And so I'm gonna consider 
that anything over five as being on, it's running. If it's been under five watts for four minutes straight, then it's probably done, right? Now, if you have some really long cycle, you're probably going to have to change that. Now, of course, I know what you're thinking already, that you're going to have a delay that's really going to get done. And then, well, it's going to sit there for four minutes and then finally notify you. Now, the action is I want to go ahead and do a call service. The input text set value and then the entity is going to be that input text that we just created. And then the service data, it's gonna be value, single quote, idle, whatever you wanna put, it's cosmetic. Is I'm gonna go ahead and send a voice message to my Google Home. We're gonna be looking for text to speech. Now you could do this probably with different other media players, Alexa, whatever it might be. And the service data is entity underscore ID media player. And that's my guest room speaker. So we'll put message. So we'll say the washing machine is done and then we'll hit save. So we'll go back. And one thing I do like to do is go into the automations and you'll see we have a washer idle, right? And I'll go ahead and edit that one because I'm lazy. No, he's being efficient. Doing duplicate automation, just duplicate it. So we'll do washer, washing. So we need to change the above and you wanna do above four. And yeah, even math is hard for me at times, but you got that below five and then above four, the whole greater than less than thing. Yeah, maybe I even messed it up. But make sure you do delete and don't let it put the zero I found that if it put the zero, it just wouldn't save the automation correctly. Let's add a little thing on the GUI so we can see it. Hit the three dots, dashboard. We add a card and we'll do a glance. We'll put on here, washer state. So we'll turn it off and you should see the power go to zero. And then four minutes later, it's gonna send you notification. And no, we're not gonna make you wait. You can manually trigger the automation if you want, just to test your messages out. The washing machine is done. Thanks for starting the washer. You are the best. Hey, and before you jet, smash one of those buttons down there for us and do appreciate it. And thank you to all the Patreon subscribers. Definitely couldn't do it without you. Bringing new cool stuff to the channel all the time. Thank you. Yep, that's it. Smash it. Smash that button, bell icon, and y'all take care.